Hi, this is Roger from Kanker Labs and today we want to tear down two of these cheap air quality detectors. I got them more than one year ago during the pandemic when word got around that the CO2 level is a good indicator when to let fresh air into your room. And I thought, well, when you search for them on eBay or AliExpress, you find these and similar devices that can also display as here uh, carbon monoxide. Uh, what else do we have? HCHO is form aldehyde. And uh, you have this strange air quality index. And what else do we have? Uh, TVOC is uh, the total volatile organic compound um, value. And so they are quite simili similar, these two devices. And later I recognized they are from the same manufacturer indeed, because they have a uh, very similar internal um, designations like this is the JSM131 and this one when you open it up has a similar uh, designation. I couldn't believe uh, that for around 40 euros uh, you shall be able to measure one, two, three, four different values. The AQI is a calculated value and this one here gives you also the formaldehyde the TVOC and CO2, these are three different values. I couldn't believe uh, that the Chinese uh, can manufacture these devices so cheap because a single sensor for one of the uh, gases uh, already costs between 20 and 100 euros, depending on quality. And they shall integrate four of these sensors into one device for around 40 euros. That seemed to me a bit unbelievable. But anyway, I have these turned on now for a few minutes and they started with 300 ppm CO2 level. So that cannot be because uh, the minimum level at the moment is 400 ppm. That's the worldwide average CO2 level. Uh, so it already starts with a too low value. And when you let them run for hours or days, uh, the CO2 level climbs up and up and up and up. And uh, after a few days you are above 1000, although uh, the device is in a well-ventilated room. So um, from the first day on I had some suspicion that these things cannot be accurate and you cannot rely on the value. Although when you try and you blow some, uh, some air from your mouth, into into the vents. The value really quite quickly uh, climbs. Let's try it. I don't know where the, the right vent is for this device. Let's try. So I blew in all and you see the value is already extremely quickly climbing up and after a few minutes it will again um, go down to the value it had before. So this seems to detect carbon dioxide, but nevertheless I was suspicious because of the strange long time behavior and really how can such a cheap thing detect four completely different gases? So you cannot integrate gas sensors for four completely different gases on one chip or on one sensor. That's I think quite impossible. So uh, let's tear this thing down and let's open it. Um, first of all, let's turn it off. And we start with this one. This is the box it comes in. Air quality detector precision instrument. Yeah, we'll see how precise this thing is. So uh, I've already taken out two screws because I had it open before, so it should, it, it has a, a lithium ion rechargeable battery inside and this is the, the charging port here with a micro USB. So that's what's inside, uh, not very much. And this is the sensor and this immediately um, reminded me of the cheap Figaro sensors 
that you get from I think from the 1980s on so let's unscrew the PCB to see if there is something on the on the bottom and except for the LCD screen and the push button there is nothing on this side but how can a single sensor with four pins how shall this uh, be able to detect four three or four different gases and the only other chips that we have here is the obviously the LCD driver and a single microcontroller I'll take out my magnifier to see what kind it is so I looked it up um, it's a SH79F166AF controller from a apparently Chinese manufacturer called Sino Wealth and uh, the LCD controller is a standard Holtec controller and nothing nothing more uh, here um, so how shall can it be possible here we have the the sensor with the four pins uh, typically these sensors have two pins for a heater uh, because they heat up a material like zinc oxide or tin oxide and then the uh, the other two pins uh, there you measure the resistance of the sensor and we can try just to turn it on and see if we can measure uh, this is obviously a shunt resistor here and let's see if we can one of these must be a shunt resistor so this one here is 27 K in parallel with a capacitor so this is probably the resistor which forms a voltage divider together with the resistance of the sensor and this resistor here has 8.2 ohms so that's apparently the current limiting resistor for the heater and uh, let's try to turn this on and then measure the heater current let's see where was the on button yeah now it turns on and uh, these devices have a kind of warm-up time for one or two minutes for a kind of self calibration and let's get off with the reflection here so let's see if we can measure the heater current so we have 340 millivolts over the 8.2 ohms resistor and this should give 0.34 volts divided by 8.2 ohms so this gives 40 milliamps of heater current and let's wait the two minutes until the calibration it now is 100 seconds so it should the calibration time should be over if there is some change in the heater current if it is shut down or lowered because the lithium ion battery it will be drained in a few hours if the 20 milliamps is continuously flowing so now the the calibration time of two minutes is over and we still measure 340 millivolts over the shunt or current limiting resistor and so this is I'm quite sure this is a simple uh, one gas sensor and a cheap non-reliable and non-precision sensor either, either from Figaro or a similar manufacturer perhaps if I magnify this a little bit you can see it a bit more 
clearly there's a little wire mesh uh, above the, the sensor element just to protect it but you uh, here you can look a little bit inside and the little square inside that seems to be uh, the sensor element where simply the resistance is measured via a second resistor here which forms a resistive divider so that's a very simple principle but with these sensors uh, you, ca you cannot re measure reliably any kind of gas so um, let's take our second air quality detector and see what th this one gives insight when we tear it apart and I already uh, found out that um, this is simply um, the plate here the top plate that you have to take off and it has quite a similar um, construction uh, we have again a, a microcontroller and this time an LED driver and if you take it out what do we find the same sensor of course because it's the same manufacturer so we don't have to to do any more a measurement here because it will work exactly the same way and gives exactly the same wrong values so uh, this thing is usable for absolutely nothing uh, perhaps you can salvage the the, the LED displays um, but if you want to rely on I mean carbon mo monoxide uh, this is a very dangerous uh, gas and if you have a detector for this gas it, it should give precise values because your life could depend on uh, that this thing really works and can warn you in case of too high carbon monoxide levels so uh, don't buy these things as far as I found out really CO2 detectors with reliable uh, measurements um, they have a completely different measurement principle and that is an optical, an optical measurement principle by measuring the absorption in the infrared spectrum of a CO2 so I really warn you uh, to spend money on on these two devices absolutely useless Perhaps the lithium-ion battery inside is uh, worth another project of your own, but uh, I will discard these two things. Um, they are really crap. Chinese crap. So, that was it. Thanks for watching. Until next time. Bye from Roger. Bye from Kanker Labs.